In this episode, we go from having this to having an almost fully completed rotor stack minus the electronics and the stepping mechanism. 3D Printing and Enigma Machine, Part 2 At the end of the last episode, I had created one rotor and designed most of the reflector for the Enigma Machine. Since then, I have made considerable progress on the project. I decided that my main aim would be to build the base of the machine so that I would have something to attach the parts to. I found this piece of MDF wood, which I thought I would use for the base plate. The MDF wood on its own is too bendy and thin, so I decided that the best course of action was to cut it to size three times and glue the pieces together with lots of PVA glue. In order to do this, I collected up a few heavy books and every clamp I could find. And there we go, all I have to do now is wait for that to dry and I'll probably leave it for 24 hours to be honest just to make sure that that is extra firm. I think it served its purpose and there was no noticeable warping which was what I had been trying to avoid. Overall I was extremely happy with the strength and glossy finish the MDF provided and it probably saved me several days of print time and warping problems had I tried to 3D print the base. Despite the many upsides, creating the base in this manner also had some drawbacks. The vertical connectors, which would have been precisely machined on a real Enigma machine, would instead have to be attached to the MDF securely and without flexing, and that was skirting around the issue of actually creating the connectors themselves. As far as I could see, there were two ways to create these. The first was by 3D printing them, and the second was by making them out of brackets I already had. I decided to try a mix of these methods and so I first designed these connectors for the side pieces of the rotor stack to attach to and then I made these two out of metal brackets for the plate which steps forward the rotors each time a key is pressed. In order to create this I basically took the metal bracket held it in a vise and hammered it until it was flat. I have yet to try the metal brackets but I fixed the 3D brackets to the base with some wood screws and was impressed with how securely it held together. Another part I produced this week was the lever arm which allows the reflector to be moved in and out locking the rotor stack in position but also allowing it to be removed when the rotors need to be swapped out. So I've printed out this new piece and it's the lever arm which goes on the side and I explained this a bit in the last video but effectively what happens is that um, you um, pull this around to this side and it pushes it out and then that locks in the um, Enigma rotors and when you push it back um, it will basically come in and out like that. So I've printed that and um, it sort of works. Um, the only issue is it seems a bit flimsy at the top here and in fact actually it's almost breaking already. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, thicken it and you can see on the monitor I've already thickened it slightly compared to the model. And so I did thicken it. And while the result is far from perfect, it's good enough. The next step was to build up the sides of the Enigma machine. I had some trouble designing the sides, but I soon worked out how to do it. On the first print, the piece came out a little bit warped, but didn't seem too disastrous. So I decided to go with it as Surely a little bit of warping couldn't make that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. The piece also showcased what I believe is an error in the otherwise extremely impressive plans from the Weingarten College. As can be seen here, I had to snap off a piece which got in the way of the lever. 
Unfortunately, both side pieces are too flexible, and so I shall have to redesign them with spars across the back in order to prevent this flex, and to make it easier to hold the rod which goes through the centre. Speaking of the part which travels down the centre of the road stack, I had been using this steel rod to give myself an idea of how it would work mechanically, but I decided I would be better off using something lighter. I decided to use a carbon fibre arrow, and so, after a while searching about, I found some in my attic. Rather conveniently, I discovered that the central inserts of the rotors fitted snugly around the arrows, allowing them to rotate freely without any movement in other axes, which was exactly how it was supposed to work. Now that I had built up the stand and had all of the pieces required to build up the rotor stack, I was missing the essential pieces, the two remaining rotors. This took considerably longer than I expected, as I got about halfway through printing the rotors when my printer began to malfunction. The issue was that the feeding mechanism, here, was chewing into the filament and flattening it so that it couldn't pass through this tube to the hot end. I believe that the reason this was happening is because I was printing too close to the bed and so the feeding mechanism had to put more pressure on the filament so that it would actually extrude properly. Since I've increased the distance between my um, uh, hot end and the bed, I have not had this issue and I've been able to print fine. The symptoms of this problem are well showcased here. So. Um, what I believe happened was I was printing too close to the bed for most of it, and then when it got to this layer here, it um, it actually got stuck on the flattened piece uh, where while it was trying to pass through here, and then simply uh, would not um, it could not push it through any further, and therefore just flattened it even more, uh, making the problem even worse. So what I did to fix this problem was I, I basically unloaded and reloaded the filament. I also uh, took the opportunity to remove any dust from around the extruder and um, to generally clean out the hot end. The final stage was assembly. As you can see, I finished printing the remaining rotors and I produced this rod for them to fit on. It has these two brass bolts sticking out of the end to facilitate the easy removal of the rotors from the corresponding rods on either side. The main issue I have right now is that, as it is supported only at one end, there is nothing preventing this shaft from moving, and therefore the entire system from sagging. The solution to this is for me to design and print a piece which bolts to this and has a hole the diameter of the rod. This should prevent the movement. I decided that to simplify the entire system's design, I would try to design everything around rods of this size unless that was impractical. You can see this method of thinking at the back, as this was unnecessarily complicated and I simplified it by just using the arrow. I plan to resize the drivers that go at the back to fit on a arrow in the next video. This is as far as I have gotten so far and I hope by the next video I will have had time to produce the stepping mechanism or plate which sits here. After I have done that I will more seriously investigate the comparatively simple electronics of the build. In the meantime I have a few more pieces to 3D print. Thank <laughs> you.